Hey folks, uh, today we're going to talk about using pesticides and herbicides, and this is very important when we study uh, precision agriculture, because as we fly over, whether it be with an airplane, a drone, or just walking over our land, we're going to be looking for areas that have been affected by uh, pest. And now pest, a lot of times people think pest can be just you know, weeds, yeah, weeds are a pest, or they'll think, you know, we've got uh, uh, insect pests, they can be a pest, and then we've got other kinds also. But today we're gonna to concentrate on two. The first one of these is, uh, when we talk about it, we talk about uh, weeds. And uh, I always remember when I was in college, our professor in agronomy always said, a weed was nothing more than a plant growing where you don't want it. And that's a pretty neat little definition. So we're gonna look at how to control those because when we're flying over there, we're gonna say, oh, they say over here must have some pest. Uh, or they might look over here and say, oh, wonder what kind of pest that is. Is it an insect? Is it a weed? Could it be a combination of both? Or could it just be sick? So we're gonna talk about that today. Uh, and a lot of times when we talk about being sick, it just might be sometimes like when we're sick, uh, we're not getting the right food in our bodies to keep us healthy, or as we say in that plant, to keep it healthy. Uh, we're gonna look again about uh, different types of uh, pesticides, the type of herbicides, uh, and we're going to try to come up with some ways that we can help control these and how to identify when they become pests. Uh, we've talked about this before, but we need to go over it again. It's very important to us. When we talk about what plants need to have to grow, we've got to have good sunlight, as I look out here today, we don't have that. Uh, we're going to have to have water. Now, water can be kind of a double-edged sword here. When could water be good? Guy in the back row, when could water be good? When they have the right amount of water coming at the right time. Now, when could water be bad? When we get too much. I always remember growing up on the farm, and my father always said, uh, boys, you can never have too much water. We, we always, we were on high ground, so that was probably a true statement for him. Had we been down on the river, that would, would have been a bad statement there. Okay, now, I like that last one. We got that heart up there, and it said, we need to love that soil. We need to love that soul so much that we want to help us. We want to protect it. Okay, from pest, weeds, and disease. Now, the young lady, about halfway through the room here, how can we protect it? How can we protect it? Let's take a look at weeds. I want to point out something here. A lot of times we don't think about it. We often think of herbicides, you know, controlling weeds. How's another way we can control weeds? Now let's look over here at this cartoon on the right. And we're looking at it and it shows that guy with that big broccoli and the one farmer on the left, he's confused. He's thinking he's trying to uh, grow trees. Let's go back and Actually, the guy here is trying to grow broccoli. Do you think that farmer on the right is going to have a weed problem? I see a lot of people shaking their heads no. Why do you think he's not going to have a weed problem? Because there's no sunlight below that broccoli. So you, if you can outgrow that, those weeds, keep a canopy on top of them, a cover on top of those weeds, they're not going to grow very fast. Remember, a weed is just a plant growing where we don't want it. 
And that farmer on the right, he's not going to have a weed problem because there's no light down there. Now, let's talk about pesticides. And a lot of times we get confused and people think, well, pesticides, those are things that just kill weeds. No. Look at what it says up there that it can kill. Plants. Now, that's a herbicide. Uh, animals. What type of animals are pests? We've got a storage room at our house where my wife keeps all our math stuff. Yes, my wife is a math teacher. I know that sends fear of most of y'all's hearts. And I've got two puppies. My puppies are pesticides. They're actually what we call rodenticide. Now, what would a rodenticide control? Yeah, nice rats. Um, I went out yeah, a couple of days ago and I heard a racket out there and went out and one of them was taking his front paw and smashing a mouse. He was controlling that mouse the best he could. And we see that. So we, we got to control some of these things. Uh, if we look in the upper right hand corner, we see slug control. Again, they're predators. They eat things that we don't want them to eat. Uh, so we have plants being you know, herbicides. Some people might say herbicides. I don't know which is the correct pronunciation. I've heard both herbicides, herbicides, who knows? And finally, insecticides, things controlling insects. Now, most of the time we think of insecticides are things like sprays uh, that would control them. How else can we control insects? If I got any ideas? Oh, yeah, that's right. We have some good insects. Good insects would be like uh, ladybugs. I remember when I used to have a greenhouse at my high school that I taught in, I'd go order me some uh, ladybugs, put them out there and control those insects. So we're going to look at these different types of pesticides. Pesticide is just them. An overall word that covers all these insect uh, things that we control. And it doesn't have to be a spray. It can be those other things that we use. Ah, oh, this is one I really like. I love this picture. I was looking at this picture when I was making this recording, and it just really fascinated me for some reason. We look up here and we see all these little mites together. Uh, that's not good. All these guys together make some pretty good sized holes. If we look above them, you know, we see. Oh, uh, now my miticides are different from insects for a major reason. Does anybody know? Yeah, they've got eight legs. Where most insects have, we all know, six legs. So it's a little, I'd like to call them an insect that went to school. They're a little smarter. And we can use miticides. We can use some of these friendly insects. We can get out there, and I used to do this with my kids all the time. And the uh, lady that's recording this taught horticulture. She probably did it too. You take your kids out there and take their little fingers and whack them off of the, the branches to get rid of them. So we can see a lot of different ways to control them, but it's, they've got to be controlled. When you run a greenhouse, when you have plants inside your house, even though that greenhouse and that house provide protection, they also provide insulation. They hold those little critters in there and uh, make them a little harder to control. Okay, insecticides, control insects. Now, we've got a couple of different ways to control them. We can, like I said just a minute ago, we take your finger and whack them off. That's like I refer to as mechanical control. And getting rid of them. Uh, then we have some other ways. Uh, they come in contact with the uh, insecticide and that kills them. Uh, they swallow. The insect does. Swallows the insecticide. And finally, and this is the one I really like, it's something that we really don't have much control over until we bring them in. That's where we bring in our good insects to control them. 
that's where we bring in our kids at school. You're at home, you're walking through the house and you're taking care of them. Uh, it'd be kind of tough to take care of. I really like the looks of the cucumber beetle. Okay, a couple ways that we can spray. And this is becoming more and more popular as far as the ones on the right, back in the south and in the west, using aircraft. Some of y'all may know I specialize in using drones to help control this. Uh, the guy on the left, he's got a pretty good sized sprayer there, and he's running down the field and spraying to control them. Now, there's some disadvantages to this. Can anybody name me a disadvantage? Yeah, drift. Either one of these. If this, this is on a real windy day, it can create some problems. Could blow over to the neighbor. I have a daughter who's a lawyer. And one day she calls me up and said, Hey, can you help me a minute? And I said, Sure, Kathy, what you need? She goes, I'm in the middle of a suit where I'm defending a farmer who sprayed and the drift blew over onto somebody else's land. This is where drift, and you hear this all the time, you really make sure you need to read all the label instructions. Now, you all aren't quite old enough to get into some of this heavy stuff. The high school students would be, or the adults that are there today. Make sure you understand what drift is. Make sure you understand when would be a good day to spray. Now, that's a good question. When would be a good day to spray? Oh, that's a good answer a day when there's not much wind. Because if there's a lot of wind, it could blow to the neighbor and kill things in his yard and, or her yard and uh, God, some, you know, this is lawsuit city coming in here. Make sure that you understand and that farmer, whoever's applying, that's a good day or a bad day. Okay, herbicides, We're looking at weed killers. Now, we've got some other things here, and I don't include, uh, and I imagine my cohort here has done this too, where I remember dad used to take us out in the middle of the field and uh, give my brother and I each a machete and would say, this is what I want you all to kill today. And you'd spend all day whacking down those weeds. That's mechanical control. Now, let's look at these different ways to have chemical control. We have non-selective. Whatever it touches, it kills. And that can be good. Cannot be good. Sometimes we'll heard this term as you get more involved in agriculture is burn down. You're going to eliminate everything in the field. Get rid of it. Now, selective herbicides only kills certain plants. Okay, let's think about that one. Not all of us in here are farmers or going to be farmers. Can anybody think of a weed that we might want to get out of our yard in the spring? Okay, we've got a hand up back there. Yeah, dandelions. Now, yard weed control. This is very important here to understand. We've got monocotyledons and we've got dicotyledons. What's another, dicot, monocotyledons, that's kind of a $10 word for a while. Grass. We've got grasses growing in our yard. We don't want to kill those when we kill the dandelions. So we use what we call a selective herbicide. We got dirt, spray it, kills the dandelions, the green grass stays green. Okay, non-selective, you're gonna kill everything. We hear uh, a lot about uh, different non-selective herbicides. Wherever you put it, whatever it touches, it's gonna be killed. Now, the other two types we have, pre-emergence and post-emergence. Now, if you look up at the screen, you see that pre-emergence, you spray. Now, when I'm making this video, it's uh, 
the last part of March, a lot of stuff hadn't come up yet. So we're going to go out there spraying our flower beds to keep things from coming up that we don't want. Now, I've been working on my flower beds this weekend, you know, this afternoon when I get through, I want to go home and uh, try to get rid of anything that's up and maybe you put in some pre-emergence herbicide. Pre-emergence hadn't come up yet. It's not going to come up. So you got to be real careful. Make sure you don't have something down there planted that you want to come up. And finally, we have post-emergence. Kill stuff that's out of the ground. And that's either going to be a selective or a non-selective, depending on what you need to do. But you got pre-emergence, kill it before it gets here. Post-emergence, you're going to kill it after it gets up. Okay, finishing up, we've talked about a lot of things dealing with herbicides, pesticides. Now we talked about our animals, our rodenticides, our miticides. And all those things are good as long as we use them the right way. Like I said, if you're spraying and it's on a windy day, you don't want to do that. You don't want to put too much on the field because that could cause things not to come up. First thing you need to do is go talk to someone. And again, adults, you guys are aware, you and ladies, uh, that you want to find out what's the recommended pesticide to put down to control what you want to control. Okay, do we have any questions for the adults in here? Again, herbicides, weed control, you know, insecticide, insect control. Thank you very much. Have a good day.